Hi everyone, this is Moni Singh and welcome to Teaching STEM. Today we are focusing on dealing with the dips. What does that mean in the context of teaching STEM, STEAM, STREAM, uh, whatever name you call them with. So um, one of the things, the very important parts about STEM is that there is creation involved in the process, right? We are inspiring, encouraging kids to go make something, build something based on whatever they're learning in that process. And as you all know, whenever there's a creation involved, there are uh, failures which are part of that process. Now, I remember I was speaking with a neuroscientist um, a couple of weeks back, and he was describing that 90% of their experiments would fail. Now, imagine that high rate of failures and think about what does it do to us? Like, you know, we are adults, right? And when we hit roadblocks, when we see failure, what happens? The immediate, immediate reaction is emotional, right? We get, uh, we are frustrated, we are sad, and um, and so there is, there's a lot of those emotions that start coming uh, when things like those happen where you did not expect a failure or a roadblock, and you were so excited about getting something done, making something, and then all of a sudden you've hit uh, hit a roadblock. And it's not um, a very interesting feeling, if I can put it that way, right? Um, we typically in um, in professional lives or even in personal lives, we see what's called a BCD reaction. Uh, it's um, either blaming others, uh, complaining about the tools or the environment that we are in, or and um, and uh, and the and the D part is basically. Um, uh, you know, defending yourself, defending self that, okay, I did all this thing. And even when I did all this thing, this is happening. So you get into that BCD mode and that's an emotional reaction to any kind of failure. Now that's us, right? I mean, we are supposed to be the, the older, mature people. And if that's what we go through, think about the little kids, right? Uh, the youngsters who are going through your STEM classes. And of course, when they see failures, they are getting similar kinds of reactions. Um, not a great feeling to have. So uh, when you are teaching STEM, you do have to find ways to uh, help children deal with those dips because the dips are going to happen. And the more they're prepared for that, the more they're able to tackle those problems. And we all know, right? I mean, that's what life is all about too. So even after they come out of schooling and they're going into their real life, they do need to understand how to deal with these dips that happen in life so frequently. So so, um, so now the question is, uh, how do you do that, right? How do you prepare them? The first part really of that whole process is to set expectations. You know, when um, when you begin any class, uh, you always have expectations about, okay, here are the behaviors I'm expecting from each one of you. And if you didn't have, if you don't show these behaviors, here are the consequences or here are the rewards when you do demonstrate behavior, right? And similar to that, you do need to set upfront expectations with the children that failures will happen. You may hit roadblocks. You may feel this low energy, you know, like um, something you were expecting, you were so energized about, but now it's not working. You will feel those emotions. And when you feel that way, it's okay. It's okay. It's very important to let them know that it's okay and things are still fine. So that's number one. Setting those expectations upfront is the key. Um, to to ensuring that you know uh, that the kids once it happens they know that it's still okay it's normal okay so that's number one number two we instill a mindset of um, celebrating failures celebrating failures it is so important and I you know we have done so many classes we do this all the time and it's all about uh, celebrating those little failures you know how we celebrate successes yes we celebrate failures because of the mindset here the mindset is that it's not really a failure when they hit a roadblock something didn't work they just found a way in which it does not work that's a success they just found what does not work now, uh, Thomas Edison um, has been famously, you know, uh, the quotes about this that he, when he was trying to find the right filament for the light bulb, um, he tried so many different materials to make the filament of the light bulb, right? Including his own hair. And none of those worked. And after 10,000 attempts like that, 
he kept failing. And so somebody asked him, uh, Mr. Edison, so you keep failing, um, uh, you know, uh, do you feel miserable? How do you feel? And he said, no, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that this will not work. Right? It's so empowering. You just found the way it does not work. That's success. And that's what you want to let the children know, you know, that, okay, you just found something that in which it doesn't work. So when a child or a group of children who are working on a project, an engineering design challenge, they hit a roadblock, you make it a point of success. And you say, hey, listen, you just found a way in which it does not work. Let's look at it. Let's Let's see what's really happening. Let's try to understand that as a group and you make it a central activity. You bring it to the center and say, okay, let's team, let's class, let's look at it. What's happening here? Why is it not working? It's a learning opportunity. And then you try to figure out ways to improve the design uh, to see how it's going to function, um, you know, the way we intended it to work. So that's how it all works. Set expectations up front, celebrate those failures. And remember, this is going to happen even at times you as a teacher might feel frustrated about those things, but these are learning opportunities and embrace them just like that, okay? I will leave you with the thought that whenever you see these roadblocks, these problems, problems equals opportunities, okay? Embrace that mindset, celebrate those failures, and I will talk next time.